Alrighty, so please excuse my voice. It tends to go in and out. I have been sick the entire Christmas season, but I'm doing my very best not to cough on film or to sound like a uh, gravelly old person right now because it's this has been a struggle, my friends. Anyway, so for our project today, we're going to be using some of our three millimeter vegan suede. I have some large hole spacers. Now they don't need to be large hole. That's just all I happen to have for today. I'm going to be using some six by nine millimeter check glass beads and some 10 millimeter Robles wood. I also have a length of chain, a charm and some little uh, four millimeter 18 gauge jump rings. I'm also going to be using these little bead tips. And for our tools, we have an assortment of things today. Of course, we're going to be making something with a barrel knot tube. We'll be using a little bit of GS Hypo Cement. I'm going to show you a little trick using an awl. This is not something that you absolutely need. I'll give you a, an alternative if you don't have one of these. And we may use our tweezers. And then we're going to need a pair of chain nose pliers. And I have round nose pliers here, but I'm going to cut this out in a second and get another pair of pliers. So hang on one second. All right, same handle, just different uh, pliers. So what I actually needed was a pair of bent chain nose pliers and a pair of scissors or cutters. But you guys know I never have scissors around. So uh, the other thing that we're going to be using is some 0.8 uh, uh, elasticity. Um, and we've got about 12 inches here. And that's everything we're going to need. So let's get started. All right, so the first thing you always want to do when you get your elasticity is you want to start pre-stretching it. Now, if you don't do that, two things happen. One, your bracelet will sag on you and then all of a sudden it'll start looking like it's too big and your beads will all look kind of sloppy in there. And two, it makes it really, really hard to tie really decent knots um, if you are not stretching it. So now you don't want to stretch this so tight or so hard that you break the elastic. And you know what? I'm a bit of a hard puller on things and I have been known to break this. So now when you do um, stretch it out, you can see, I mean, I don't know if you can tell, but that is so much more than what we started with. But because it's a thinner wall, it's going to be so much easier to work with. Now on the very end, what we're going to do is we're going to tie a succession of knots. So I'm going to tie a knot and then pull that nice and, and tight. All right, so we've got our first knot done and then we're going to use uh, or we're going to make a second knot. So I'm going to put that over top. Now, sometimes it's hard to get that second one on there, and I will often use a pair of tweezers, which is what I have that these here for, but I think I can probably manage without. So what you want to do is you're going to be creating sort of a bulky knot, and so we're going to do a succession of knots, and we want to get them right on top of each other. So there's three, and I'm pulling fairly tight in between because I want that to... Um, stay where it is because if you don't tighten these knots up they're going to just end up like this they're going to come right out so you want to make sure that you're making that really tight we're not going to be um, now I'm not going to be putting the glue on because when I put the glue on on camera well, maybe I'll try and see what happens but generally if I put glue on on camera it just kind of goes everywhere but let's just see what we can do so what I would do is just put, yeah, see it's coming out really fast. So I'm just going to put that off to the side and let it spill all over a piece of paper that I have uh, because it um, makes one heck of a mess. So what I would do is I would put a little dot of glue on there and then walk away and leave this for five or ten to uh, get nice and dry. And then, sorry with all the tool noise today. And then I would give that a little trim. And if you've uh, glued that properly, it won't fall apart. But you want to make sure you do put enough glue on there. Now, I'm not sure what's going to happen because my glue uh, didn't have time to cure. But we'll see what happens. So I've got my bead tip and I want to make sure that I've got the um, little loops facing outward. So I'm going to place that knot inside. And I know you can't see anything that I'm doing because I have to close it with my fingers. But I'm going to just gently with my pliers close that up. And I just pushed gently. I'm not pushing tight because one, you, it will misshape this. And two, um, you don't need to. You can actually just use your fingers. And that goes on there like that. So this is how we're going to attach using um, these uh, bead tips. I really like the idea of having a stretchy bracelet with uh, some chain on there. But any of the samples that I've ever seen of people making them, they just put the chain uh, directly onto the um, elastic. And I never really liked the way that the chain ended up buckling up. So I thought, well, let me try something a little different. So that's why we're going to be using these bead tips. So now 
we're going to just sort of start our pattern. So now you can change this up. Uh, this will be a, available in kit form and you will get all of the beads that you see uh, here today. Um, but you can, uh, you know, feel free to change things up. I sort of played around with this uh, a fair amount to try and get something that looked balanced and, um, I don't know, just looked aesthetically pleasing to the eye. Sometimes I was actually, I uh, went up for a quick break for lunch and I said to my husband, I think I have remade this bracelet four times. And that's because um, I'm a perfectionist. I like things to look just not, you know, thrown together. I wanna actually make something that looks good for you guys. So I'm just putting on a um, spacer and then our Robles wood and then another spacer. And then I'm putting on two of my Czech glass rondelles. And it, I would say that by far, um, the uh, Czech glass rondelles are probably my favorite beads of all time in any color. That's just, you know, that's my thing. I really love Czech glass. All right, so I've got two more. So you can see I started with one and that was just kind of the way that the pattern worked out is um, if I had added any more, then it would have just been too many. And if I didn't add those ones, it wasn't enough. And I've made this bracelet big enough so that it will fit about, um, about a seven and three quarter to an eight inch wrist. So if your wrist is longer than that, then you would have to um, perhaps add some beads from your own stash or something. But so far, that's what we've got happening. Now we're going to um, have to add our bead tip that we've added on one side on the other. Now this is where it can get a little bit tricky. So you kind of have to be very mindful. I'm just going to move tools and things out so you can actually see what I'm doing. I want to give enough of a um, tension on this uh, so that I don't end up with like a sloppy bracelet, but I don't want to make it so tight. Like I'll kind of over tighten it. You see how kind of it gets kind of buckly. So I'm going to find sort of that sweet spot. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to tie a knot and then I'm going to sort of feel with my fingers. Like if I did it right there, that is kind of the sweet spot because I have to leave about mm, an eighth of an inch or so for um, the bead tip. So I'm going to kind of just scoosh that down, scoosh being my technical term of the day. And I want to see how that's laying. And I think that'll be good. So now that I know that that's going to work, I want to tighten that up. So I'm stretching pretty good there because I want that to be nice and tight. Now it's going to look like it's not going to give you enough room, but we do want a bit of tension on there. So now I'm going to repeat that um, over and over again and try to get that right on top of that um, first one we did. So, you know, it can take a little bit of finagling. And again, you could use your tweezers if you found knotting on tweezers a little bit easier, but um, I'm trying to do it without today. We do sell those tweezers. I get that question a lot and uh, they're relatively inexpensive. So tweezers are a really good uh, extra little tool to have around for um, any kind of jewelry making. So if you don't have any, I would highly recommend a pair of tweezers. And then I'm just going to do a fourth one here. And I'm going to make sure that this last one is really nice and snug. And so I'm just going to, what I do is I sort of put my thumb and pull. All right. Now again, what I would do is I would put a little bit of glue on. So pop a bit of glue up at the top there. You could put a little tiny bit more on the actual uh, knot if you wanted, but I wouldn't worry about it. But I'm going to be brave and just cut this without putting glue on it because um, I just don't want to deal with the glue thing again. You should see the mess that it's made all over my um, thing here. <laughs> all right, so then I want to take my second one and again, making sure that those loops are outward. And when I say loops, I mean like the little end part there. And I'm just going to close that up. And I want to make sure that I've, um, it, you know, sort of encaptured or captured. Encaptured? Captured. What is it? Captured. Yes, yeah, cap captured. I think I was thinking of encapsulated or something like that. So I want to make sure that that whole knot is inside there. And I'm just going to kind of give it a little tiny squish. Now, one of the things you want to make sure when you're closing these up is that these two loops are directly on top of each other. The uh, jump rings that we're going to use just barely fit through there. And I needed something that was tight enough and heavy enough that would hold it, but I this gets a little bit smushy. So this is where the awl comes in handy. You can always take your awl and just sort of run it through like that, and that will realign those two holes so they're right on top of each other. 
and I can do that on the other end. I think this one looks pretty good, but that is where you're going to struggle. If you struggle at all on this bracelet, I would think it's going to be in trying to get the jump rings through that little end there. So if you don't have an awl, I don't think we have any of these for sale at the moment, but if you want one, let me know and I can try and bring some in. You could also use a larger darning needle or something like that, or maybe a really fine uh, pair of, or a, a fine um, knitting needle. You could, anything that you could get through that hole, just to sort of align it. If you don't have anything, you could very carefully take your uh, pliers, I would take your bent uh, chain nose like this, and just kind of manipulate it back. You just want to be careful that you're not going to uh, break the end of that. Okay, so I just wanted to make sure I gave you lots of little tips on how to move forward on this. Okay, so now you're gonna get a length of chain and that is going to have 13 links in this. So you wanna make sure that you um, always have, is it 13 or 14? I think it's 14. Let me see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. I do need 14 links because I um, have to do something. So I'm going to um, just break away again because you know, this is the first uh, video I've done in probably over a month. So I'm a little uh, rusty, but I'm going to uh, be right back. Hang on one sec. All right, I'm back. You know, I figured I could edit all this kind of stuff out, but I will tell you exactly what I've done wrong. So we're going to give you a length of chain that has 14 links in it. So you're going to take one of the links and you're going to just remove it. Now these are not soldered, so you just open it up like a jump ring. And that's what we're actually going to be using that for is like a jump ring. So now you want to make sure if you're sizing this, because this is where I would really size it, is... Um, within the chain. So if you're going to be removing any links, you want to remove two at a time because we want this to be um, an odd number because we're going to be going on the middle um, to hang something off of it. So if you're going to make it smaller, I would remove two links and um, then go from there. You could also remove these two on here, but it's going to be a little more difficult after the fact because you will have already made this. So I will uh, sort of uh, walk you through a little bit of sizing um, at the end and hopefully it will all make sense. Okay, so now what I wanna do is take one of my eight millimeter 14 gauge jump rings and open that up. And I wanna make sure that I'm opening up nice and smoothly on this one. Now I can see on this particular one that I've got, it's got a little bit of, um, like from when they cut it, there's like a little bit of a burr. So I'm gonna turn that around because that side looks a little bit easier to work with. And then I'm going to get it through this hole. And again, this is probably gonna be the most challenging because that uh, fits, but it doesn't always fit the first kick at the can. So if you're struggling with it, uh, make sure that you've looked at the ends and clean off any extra little metal bits that might be there or turn it around like I did because sometimes that will help. Then I'm gonna just pop on my chain and I'm gonna turn my pliers over there. And then I'm going to just make sure that that is sort of jiggled back and forth so that it's seamless and it's nice and snug. And then I'm gonna repeat on the other side. And I have to admit, this is the part that I was struggling with the most when I was creating this, was trying to get this through this little hole. So having these lined up really makes um, all the difference. I mean, I popped that on there, no problem at all. But I can guarantee you that before I did this, uh, when I was coming up with a sample, it did not work that way. <laughs> so. So now you can see that that makes a fairly large bracelet that's going to um, fit up to an eight, uh, about an eight inch wrist. So if you have a very tiny wrist, I would probably remove um, these two beads on the outside and, um, and also the extra spacer because the spacer will just pop over top of the um, end of this and it won't look very good. So you might have to sort of reconfigure it a little bit, but again, I will give you some sizing stuff in a bit here. So I'm gonna find my middle piece which is this one here. And what I wanna do now is I am going to create a barrel knot, uh, sort of a loop thing. So I'm gonna take my barrel knot tube and I am going to just sort of, I guess I'm gonna pull off about, I don't know, an inch and a half or two inches. If you like a really fringy look, then you can um, make this a little bit longer, but we have to leave enough to wrap around the, um, the little piece here. So I guess that's about an inch and a half to two inches. So I'm gonna make my regular barrel knot where I take this um, suede. Now, I don't, I don't know if I've ever made any uh, with suede before, but I get asked that, that all the time, if you can make them with other things other than leather. And yes, you can, this is our vegan suede. So we're just gonna wrap around once, twice, three times. 
And then I'm going to do the same as I always do and take that and put it through the end of the barrel knot tube. And we do sell the tubes if you're um, interested in them, uh, but we uh, would include one if you bought this kit. So now we just have to sort of um, make this look as nice as possible. And I find if I sort of hold my you know, thumbnail on the other side, you will see me doing that a lot. It kind of helps things go the way that I want. I want this to be nice and neat and nice and snug at the same time. So now I would take my glue after I kind of create my knot and I would put just a little dab right there just so that this will hold because you can't pull this as tight as the um, the leather, the round leather that I normally use. So now you can make a decision as to how you want to trim this off. You could just trim it off straight um, if you wanted to have something that looked like that or you could, you know, put it on a little bit of an angle. Um, you know, it's your piece. You can do whatever you like with it. It's just sort of a little decorative feature. So now what we're gonna do is that extra link that we had that we removed before we started this, we're gonna run that through there, through that little loop. And if you don't like that that loop is that big, you can always adjust it by pulling down on one of the um, ends before you uh, tighten it up. So now we're gonna run that through the middle link and so now it just looks like an extra part of the chain, which I quite liked. And then we are going to open up our final jump ring. And we always put a couple extra jump rings in the kits in case uh, one pops somewhere that you didn't want it. And we're gonna run that through the hole. And then we're going to just put this in that same link, but just next door to the little tassel sort of thing that we made. And then make sure that when you are tightening these up, that you sort of jiggle them back and forth so that they almost touch and then that will be a nice secure jump ring. So let me just get this all cleaned up and I will show you the completed piece. Okay, so here's the completed bracelet. So you can't even tell that this is an elastic bracelet, but the nice thing is, is that it wears like one. So it's super easy to get on and off. So as it sits right here, it would fit about a seven and three quarter to eight inch wrist. And if you took out two links of the chain, it's gonna make that to about a seven inch bracelet, which is a bit more which fit, what fits me right now because I've lost a bunch of weight and so things are fitting a little on the larger side now. So for every you know two links that you take out, it's gonna reduce it by about a half an inch. So if you have a tiny wrist, you may want to remove these two, and then you want maybe you wanna remove the two uh, links before you get started. Just make sure that you're removing two because you need this to sort of be centered. If you don't care about it, then don't worry about it. The nice thing about this is you can wear it a couple different ways. So you can wear it like this. Now you don't wanna do this when you put on um, elastic bracelets. You should take them and roll them on and that will help the wear. So you can have it with your beads on top like that, and then you can have it so that your uh, charm and your little sort of tassel dangle underneath there. The other thing that you can do is you can turn it the other way. Now I would probably wear it so that my charms went that way. So let's see, I'll see if I can turn it around. Um, so what the way that I actually created this, now it's a bit loose on me, so it doesn't look the way that I would want it to, but this is how I created it so that the um, beads were on the bottom and your um, all your uh, chain and your tassel and your uh, charm were on the top. That was sort of how I envisioned it looking, but you could wear it either way and it really doesn't matter. Um, I just think this would look a little better on me right now if it was just a bit smaller, but I wanted to make sure that I always try to be size inclusive with my kits so that most people can wear them. So um, so I think if it was a little bit tighter, it would look better, but you know, there you go. That just gives you an idea. So I hope that you liked this video. It was fun to get back at it today. I feel like it's been forever since I start, uh, bit, you know, started up a video. Um, you know, time just sometimes gets away from you, but I'm going to work very hard at uh, putting out some new content for you. And I apologize for all the ums and ers in this one because I feel really discombobulated. So uh, like I said, this will be available in kit form. You just go down to the link underneath this video and it will take you to a link that is, goes directly to my fully secure website. If you are in the United States, you will pay approximately 35 to 40% less once the bank gets through with your payment because our exchange rate is terrible right now and I'm in Canada. So if you live in the US, you will get a little bit of a bonus that way. 
Um, also, if you did enjoy this video, please make sure to give me a thumbs up. Leave me a comment as I do love to hear from everybody. And please make sure to subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so. I want to thank you so much for joining me today and I will see you on the next one.